the vegetables and fruits that we need. Of that 200,000 arable land that we have, currently we are only farming about 31,000 hectares that is irrigated. So the provision of reliable irrigation, water, to those acreages is a big challenge. So we have about 15% of our total arable land irrigated. So if we're serious about expanding agricultural output, investments have to be made in agricultural infrastructure, particularly irrigation. So I'm pleased to say today that we have the Essex Valley and the Southern Plains irrigation projects, which are ongoing. And those two projects will bring about 5,200 hectares of land under irrigation. That will move us up to about 18% of our arable land irrigated. introducing a major project that's coming for Jamaica. It's called the Southern Plain Agricultural Development Project. It involves over 2,000 acres of land that will be available to investors to across a wide range of crops. We are actually looking to get more Jamaicans involved into agriculture. Food security is very important and we're also trying to build our export markets as well. We are seeking investors both locally and overseas to enter into current agricultural production and even larger scale production. We have acreages starting from five acres up to as high as 300 acres that we're packaging to have investors um, engage in a wide range of crops, vegetables, root crops, and orchard crops. A good way to start is reaching out to AgroInvest, whether you reach out on our website, that's a great way to connect with us. From there, we can help you to build a plan around the ideas that you have for getting involved in agriculture. We have a team involved in business development, we have technical persons um, who are in charge of the agroparks, and we have a market development team which will be um, rolling out shortly to provide linkages with persons on the agropark, with buyers locally and in the export markets. Already we have the agroparks, the major ones in that area are Amity Hall, Spring Plain and Ebony Park. This development comprises what we call Ebony 2 which is going to be in St. Catherine and that will be next to Bridgepen and there will be Parnassus in Clarendon. The next one is going to be the Pedro Plains, and that is going to move us steadily towards our goal of irrigating our arable lands. Agroinvest is making a strong thrust to attract investors to the agriculture sector, and so we're ready to engage persons. We can connect you with um, financing, we can help you with business planning, and we can help you with technical support to grow your investment in agriculture in Jamaica. It is proven that agricultural investment is three times more effective in increasing the income of the poor. So invest in agriculture today and make Jamaica the place of choice to live, work, raise families and do business. You know, dog a sweat, but long hair cover it. Mm -hmm. But not everybody need to know when you are going through your hard times, you know. You can dress up, have fun, and carry on with life, even though all is not well in your life. You see me, yeah? Dog a sweat, but long hair cover it.
Bridging. The road signs make the traffic environment safe. The green light means go. Red means stop. Amber also means stop. Yeah man, it don't mean you must speed up. And get this, even if the light's on green, when the traffic is thick, don't bother move off and block the intersection. And please, don't stop on a pedestrian crossing. Look out for children, the disabled and the elderly. Follow the signs so they all can arrive alive. Be a good road user. Obey the road signs and look out for each other. The proposed Tobacco Control Act places a total ban on all forms of tobacco advertising, promotion and sponsorship in keeping with Jamaica's treaty obligations. Tobacco marketing often targets and seeks to recruit new users, especially the youth. This contributes to greater tobacco use and addiction. Local data shows that health expenditures related to smoking attributable diseases far outweighs the suggested value of sponsorship or corporate social responsibility initiatives. By implementing this comprehensive ban, Jamaica will join 57 other countries globally, including three CARICOM counterparts. Comprehensive bans, such as that provided for in the bill, will therefore reduce consumption, provide economic benefit, and protect the nation's youth. Are you non-partisan, able to read and write well, and ready to serve your country? The Electoral Office of Jamaica is recruiting persons like you to become Election Day workers. Apply at the nearest EOJ constituency office without delay. Bring a valid ID and TRN. Election Day workers will be trained and compensated. Together, we can ensure free and fair elections. We are celebrating the fact that the Students' Loan Bureau, and by extension, the government of Jamaica, is increasing the grants in aid benefits for low-income households, PATH beneficiaries, and wards of the state. The grants in aid, in aid has honestly been a driving force in my personal and intellectual development. The Student Loan Bureau is not just facilitating higher education, we are bridging the gap between dreams and reality. We are here today to announce the fact, to make sure that all Jamaicans know that we are increasing the grant in aid program year over year by 68%. A grant in aid is a non-repayable, non-repayable monetary provision afforded to students of low-income household, wards of the state, and path beneficiaries. This benefit becomes accessible once you apply for a targeted loan, and that's the loan when you don't pay until you graduate. Last year, just last year, we had 3,000 grants at $50,000 each. This year, we'll have 4,200 grants at $60,000 each. This means we have allocated in this year's budget 252 million for 4,002 qualifying applicants. The purpose is to provide financially challenged students with supplementary assistance for other school-related expenses, such as books, tuition, um, books, um, transportation, food, etc. It's only Student Loan Bureau that you can come to and get that kind of grant in that kind of scale for your education. So this is an incentive for Jamaicans interested in tertiary education to seek out the Student Loan Bureau. So how do you apply for granted aid? You can log on to our website and apply for a targeted loan. The grant is provided once the loan is approved and the applicant eligibility is verified and after disbursement funds or tuition to the institution. You will automatically, if you are from a household where the income levels are $1.5 million or less, and we are inviting all Jamaican students who qualify to come and get your grant. We are interested in 
increasing tertiary enrollment in Jamaica. The only way our society is going to grow and develop is if the productivity of our country improves. These are offerings that will continue to drive economic growth and competitiveness in the Jamaican economy by ensuring a highly skilled and adaptable workforce. Aside from the monetary value, the SLB grants in aid has served as a testimonial to my hard work, devotion, and promise. It has inspired me and it has enhanced confidence in me, emphasizing that my efforts have not gone unappreciated. We are building bridges and transforming dreams. This is a revitalized, re-energized, reinvigorated Student Loan Bureau that's modernizing to meet the needs of Jamaica today. So I'm a beneficiary of the SLB granting aid and I just really have to say that it came at, at a moment that it was really needed. I was able to cover my school expenses and to make it even better, while I was volunteering at the Bustamante Hospital for Children, I was able to cover my expenses there. Commendations to the Government of Jamaica and the Minister of Finance through the leadership of the Minister of Finance who continues to drive and develop policies geared towards improving access, equity and educational opportunities for Jamaicans. Jamaica is moving forward. Jamaica is serious about education. Together, we can create a safer Jamaica for our children. We need to get the guns and save our country. Are you nonpartisan, able to read and write well, and ready to serve your country? The Electoral Office of Jamaica is recruiting persons like you to become Election Day workers. Apply at the nearest EOJ constituency office without delay. Bring a valid ID and TRN. Election Day workers will be trained and compensated. Together, we can ensure free and fair elections. Traveling to Jamaica? Submit your customs and immigration declaration online for faster processing. Visit the enterjamaica.com portal, complete and submit your declaration prior to departure. Upon arrival, proceed to the immigration kiosk and swipe your passport to confirm your trip details and declaration. Once done, proceed to the customs hall to retrieve your luggage and final clearance. The online C5, making air travel easier. You may contact us or the Passport Immigration and Citizenship Agency for more information. Jamaica's new banknotes are now in circulation. But can customers still use old banknotes? The old banknotes will be phased out over time, but can still be used to carry out your everyday transactions. Bank of Jamaica encourages Jamaicans to exchange old banknotes for new notes at commercial banks across the island. It is important that health facilities can withstand natural disasters and provide continuous access to care during and immediately after such events. And so there has been much focus on improving resilience, strengthening structural and operational systems, and equipping these facilities with green technologies. Much of the work is happening through the Smart Healthcare Facilities Project. Jamaica, like all the countries in the Caribbean, is vulnerable to numerous climatic events like hurricanes, floods and drought, which can have a devastating effect on the nation. We're aware that uh, natural disasters are increasing in both frequency and impact. Um, and it's absolutely essential that after a natural disaster, 
basic services are restored as quickly and efficiently as possible. And that's what, the, what, that's what this program is about. Essentially, a hospital or a health centre should remain standing after the most severe disaster. Originally, this work to create safer, greener and climate smart institutions is part of a £46.3 million smart health project. The initiative receives funding from UK aid through its Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office in the Caribbean. It's being implemented over a seven-year period by the Pan American Health Organization, PAHO, in collaboration with the Ministries of Health in selected countries. We accept that as a people, we have to prepare. And we are very happy that from a partnership standpoint, uh, the British people, the UK government, UK aid, as well as PAHO, uh, which we are members of clearly, have said, listen, let us come together and ensure that we have more resilient, more uh, smart facilities. This initiative is not only allowing for continuous functioning of healthcare facilities during disasters, but is also reducing energy, water and other operational costs, as well as the carbon footprint. More than 400 medical facilities across seven different Caribbean countries were audited to assess their disaster vulnerabilities and needs. We then uh, designed a blueprint, a model, for making them more resilient, safer, but also more efficient. Uh, we designed three standards, gold standard, silver standard and bronze standard. Since then, UK aid has funded upgrades to 55 health facilities in the Caribbean. 14 of Jamaica's primary healthcare institutions have benefited at a cost of £8 million. The transformation of health facilities under this partnership has not only tackled the challenge of climate change, but also created more attractive and comfortable spaces for health workers and patients. Upgrades include replacement and strengthening of damaged roof to withstand hurricane, along with waterproofing and the installation of new hurricane-resistant windows and doors. These facilities are also being equipped with firefighting equipment and fire detection devices, improved electrical networks and generators for backup power, as well as the installation of solar panels for clean energy and water heaters and LED lights to ensure efficient and sustainable electrical power to each facility. Stormwater drains are being incorporated to mitigate flooding. Rainwater harvesting systems with both above and underground tanks and water-saving faucets provide increased availability and cost efficiency of this commodity. Work is also done to provide more efficient cooling and ventilation. Antimicrobial surfaces also get introduced to critical areas. It's a really good partnership. It, it, this uh, smart facility of course, with the technical support of and, and, and standards that PAHO provided, the guidance, PAHO WHO, really has created people and government of Jamaica, Pan American Health, WHO, and of course, uh, UK aid, the, the, the British government and people. Uh, what is a model that we want to standardize across the length and breadth of Jamaica and our public health system? Go down a Manuel Road, Gallam Boy, to go broke rock stone, Gallam Boy. Dinga must no cry, Gallam Boy. Remember the play with the play, Gallam Boy. One of the story of Big Boy is that Big Boy was in school and teacher Hawks, um, who died for Adam Falling Race. And Big Boy sat there and teacher direct this question to, to Big Boy and Big Boy wouldn't answer. Big Boy's grandmother was behind him with her pin in her hat and Big Boy wouldn't answer. And when grandmother heard that he wouldn't answer, she pulled the hat pin out and stuck him in the back. And he said, oh Lord Jesus Christ. And the teacher said, what a bright boy. 
and very good big boy because he felt the stick in his back, so he cried out for Lord Jesus Christ, but he didn't know that it was Lord Jesus Christ was the answer that teachers, teacher was looking for. Are you an entrepreneur producing an excellent Jamaican product or service? Did you know you can earn hard currency and more significant returns by exporting? Contact the Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce to help propel your business along the export lane. Everything you can produce, the Jamaicans overseas want it. We're not going to get rich by just bringing down the debt. We're going to get rich by exporting a lot more. So grow exports. Create job opportunities. Drive economic growth through exports to make Jamaica a richer and much more prosperous country. Hospital visits are anticipated to increase up to the end of this year and into the first few months of next year as we see more. Please remain standing for the national anthem. as I invite the chairperson of the Spanish Town Ministers Fraternal, Reverend Yvette Harriot, to say prayers. Most Honorable Prime Minister, other dignitaries, good morning, bow your heads and bow your hearts for prayer. Sovereign God, Gracious God, everlasting, faithful Father, Emmanuel, you are here with us this morning, Almighty God, on this very special occasion, a celebratory occasion, Almighty God. Spirit of the living God, we give thanks. We give thanks, Almighty God, for this gathering, Almighty God. Lord God, Spanish town is being transformed, and transformation, Almighty God, is a process. Lord God, I thank you this morning for the transformational visionary leaders that we have, Almighty God. I thank you, Almighty God, for the inter, for the IDB and the European Union, Almighty God, who are supporting this activity this morning. Mighty God, nothing can happen without your doing. Almighty God, you ordained this day long before we were even born, Almighty God. 
And here we are this morning, Almighty God, to witness this service. Lord God, the construction workers, Almighty God, your word declare that except the Lord build the house, we're going to be laboring in vain. But Almighty God, we will not labor in vain, Almighty God, because the construction will be done upon your foundation. It is solid, it is secure, Almighty God, and it will stand. And in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Almighty God, I declare even now, God Almighty, good health for the workers and the completion of the exercise. Lord God, I give you the rest of the service. I put everything in your hands and I say thank you, Lord God, for what you have started. Thank you, Almighty God, for what you will be doing as we look forward to the completion of what you will begin today. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Harriet. You may be seated. The Most Honorable Andrew Holness, ON, PC, MP, Prime Minister. Dr. The Honorable Christopher Tufton, MP, Minister of Health and Wellness. Miss Denise Daly, Member of Parliament, St. Catherine Eastern. His Worship the Mayor, Councillor Norman Scott, Mayor of Spanish Town. The Honorable Isling Golding, Costas Rotolorum for the Parish of St. Catherine. Miss Teresa Turner, Councillor, Hampton Green Division, representing the Honorable Olivia Grange, CD, MP, Member of Parliament, St. Catherine Central. Mr. Dunstan Bryan, Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Dr. Jacqueline Bisesor Mackenzie, Chief Medical Officer. Her Excellency Marian Van Steen, Ambassador of the European Union and all other delegates from the EU. Mr. Lorenzo Escondor, Chief of Operations, Inter-American Development Bank. Mr. Wentworth Charles, Chairman of the Board of the Southeast Regional Health Authority, Sarah. Mr. Errol Green, Regional Director, Sarah. Dr. Sandra Chambers, Regional Technical Director, Sarah. Mr. Abdon Campbell, Parish Manager, St. Catherine Health Services. Mrs. Jacqueline, Ms. Jacqueline Ellis, Chief Executive Officer, Spanish Town Hospital. Dr. Stuart Murray, Senior Medical Officer Acting, Spanish Town Hospital. Ms. Novlet Robinson, Director of Nursing Services, Spanish Town Hospital. Mr. Oreth Clark, Program Manager, Health System Strengthening Program. Mr. Bing Bi Mr. Ding Bio, Manager, Business Department, Juan Su Zheng Wai Company, Construction Company Limited. Pardon my pronunciation. Directors of the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Other members of the management and staff of the Spanish Town Hospital. Bishop. Dr. C. Everton Thomas O.D., Emmanuel Apostolic Church, Portmore. Specially invited guests, members of the media, good morning and a warm Spanish tone welcome to you all. I am Dr. Tracia James Powell, consultant pediatrician here at the Spanish Town Hospital, and it is my distinct pleasure to guide you through the contract signing and groundbreaking ceremony for the redevelopment of the Spanish Town Hospital under the Ministry of Health and Wellness's Health Systems Strengthening Program. 
to the Prime Minister, I say, welcome home, Prime Minister, because we know your roots originated in St. Catherine. Right to, uh, in the Spanish Town Hospital, to our member of, to our Minister of Health and Wellness, the greeting is, welcome back, Dr. Tufton, since you are with us through sad times and through happy times. Today is indeed a happy day. If this is your first time with us here at Spanish Town, you could not have chosen a better day because today is a big day in our hospital's history and we're delighted to share it with you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm excited and so are you. At this time, I invite His Worship, the Mayor, Councillor Norman Scott, Mayor of Spanish Town, to offer the official welcome. Thank you very much. I'm going to accept some of your salutations because it was very elaborate and I, I, I won't be able to go through all of it. But I have to say special welcome to the most honorable prime minister. Welcome back to your home, <laughs> even though I'm in my shocking ties. <laughs> honorable Christopher Tufton, minister, MP, my own MP, MP Dennis Daly, my councillor colleagues, and um, I think there are quite a number of them in the audience. I just want to salute them. Other ministers, and I think I saw um, Minister Robert. Is, it, is that correct? Yes. Uh, officers of the Ministry of Health, the representatives from the IADB, and I tried to pronounce that name, Mr. Esconder. Also, His Excellencies of the EU. Of course, I could not go without saluting Costas Rotolorum, Mrs. Iselin Golding. Other specially invited guests, members of the media, members of the security forces, again, I say good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Today is an important day for all of us in Spanish town, St. Catherine and Jamaica at large. We are gathered here for a momentous occasion to break ground, I don't call it a redevelopment. I call it, based on what I saw, Minister, a new Spanish town hospital. So I therefore welcome this on behalf of all the citizens of Spanish town, St. Catherine, and its environment. And I want to say Jamaica at all, because the St. Catherine, the Spanish town hospital, serves the entire Jamaica. Um, I think based on its geographic location in the central part of the island, it really caters to uh, all the citizens in Jamaica. However, we have seen some kinds of conditions that the citizens of Jamaica have been enduring and um, undergoing in the healthcare system that is not suited for human being. Mr. Prime Minister, Mr. Minister, the time has come now for those conditions to end. A system which says healthcare free, but it is not available. And so, I want to just pause to say that I know that this is Spanish Town, and this is the Spanish Town Hospital, and that 
what is going to happen here will happen and will end within the time that it has been, um, sir, designated to end, unlike what is happening in the Cornwall Regional Hospital. And so I want to thank you and welcome you all to this groundbreaking. Thank you. Thank you, Your Worship. The jobs are well noted. As we are gathered in the gardens, we affectionately call this space the Gardens of Spanish Town. We are filled with pride. The weight of this momentous occasion is not lost on us. Indeed, we're beaming. Because today is the beginning of the rebirth of the Spanish Town Hospital. One can only imagine that this is how the people felt in 1952 on the 18th of June when Sir Hugh Foote opened this institution. The Spanish Town Hospital is the largest type B hospital on the island and has statistics that are comparable to the Kingston Public Hospital, the island's major referral center, and that is a type A facility. We have work here. It is located in the fastest growing parish and not only serves St. Catherine, but we also provide services to patients from Kingston and St. Andrew, Clarendon, St. Mary, and St. Anne. Hundreds of patients. Now these patients are represented by elective officials through the office of the Member of Parliament. We will now hear from two such. First, let us welcome Miss Denise Daly, Member of Parliament for St. Catherine Eastern, with her greeting, who will be followed by Miss Teresa Turner, Councillor Hampton Green Division, representing the Honorable, uh, the Honorable Olivia Grange, CD, MP, Member of Parliament, St. Catherine Central. Please Morning, everybody. Except the Lord build the city, you labor in vain that build it. Today is a great day, and I'm happy, very, very happy to be part of this groundbreaking and one of the most historical things that will happen in Spanish Town. I will just go through the protocol as much as I can, but first of all, I have to make sure that my, my Prime Minister, the Honorable Andrew Olness, who is a product of St. Catherine, product of Spanish Town, and also a member of the same alma mater that I went to. The Honorable Our Minister of Health, and I want to say to you that it's sometimes hard to say it, but Dr. Tufton, I don't know how you do it. I do not know if it's a fitness club, but something is happening. Our Custis Rotolorium, this is um, Golden, is Worship the Mayor, my counselor, my friend. It's Teresa Turner, representing Oliver Grange, minister. And she's also my colleague from council, and sister and friend. My members of parliament, from the House of Parliament, all the councils who are sitting here, from the St. Catherine Parish Council. Other distinguished guests, our uniform groups, especially Constable Force our media, and our distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Today, I feel happy. I feel happy because I know that Spanish Town long await this opportunity. Long await this opportunity. And the master of ceremonies spoke 
but she did not tell you that don't care where in the island people comes from, they still believe that Spanish town have something to offer. Today we are witnessing history. The kind of facilities that will be placed here will not just allow people to get to be cared for in an healthy way, but it is also going to be able to take the strain economically from a number of persons who would have to go into Kingston and elsewhere to get the service that this hospital, when it is completed, will offer. I was also told it is going to be one in the best in the Western Hemisphere, and I look forward to that. The Prime Minister might probably elaborate a little bit more on that. But just to say that we want this hospital um, to make sure that we finish on time. I implore the citizens to give every corporation necessary on time and within budget. Because as the mayor just said, we don't want it to be like the others that every day, because Spanish towns sometimes don't get very good name. But this time, we want this project to sell Spanish town in one of the most profound way. I was born at the, this very hospital. I'm a Spanish town woman. I was born at Waterloo Lane in Spanish town. So I have a lot of interest into making sure that this hospital become one of the greatest hospitals in the Caribbean. Once more, I want to say to each and everyone from the, from the, the Ministry of Health, the European Union, the IDB, and all the other entities that is going to make sure that this becomes a reality, that we are going to take it with pride. And it is not just going to only be, become a health center. It is going to now bring tourists into Spanish town because when you have good development, you can only have more development. God bless you. Mr. Is Eternal, Councillor from the Hampton Green Division. Thank you, Master of Ceremony. Minister Tufton, you realize that we are all Spanish Tonians. <laughs> this morning, I'm here to bring greetings on behalf of my Member of Parliament. Honorable Olivia Babsigridge, OJCD MP, the Minister of Culture, Gender, Entertainment, and Sports, and a whole other things, I can't remember. Um, I observe the protocols, but in the meantime, I just want to say, Prime Minister, my Prime Minister, Minister Tufton, we welcome this initiative. I also want to salute my Costas. Madam Costas, you're a great Costas to us JPs. And we salute you, Madam. Members of the IDB, European Union, the media, the security forces, other distinguished ladies and gentlemen, good morning again. The Honorable Olivia Grinch, thank you for the kind invitation to be part of this special activity. She regrets that she is unable to attend and has asked me to tender sincere apology on her behalf. Minister Grange has also asked me to convey her best wishes for a successful event. This is a moment of joy and hope. It's a great day, not only for us in Spanish Town and the wider St. Catherine, but all the other parishes who use the facility on a daily basis. Since its opening more than 70 years ago, the Spanish Town Hospital has been the health care facility of first call, not only for us in St. Catherine, but for the people in the neighboring parishes. Therefore, 
the importance of this hospital to the people cannot be overstated. I know that some people have negative perception of Spanish Town Hospital. The mayor just did. But thanks to the hard work and professionalism of the medical team and the investment of government in the facilities, Spanish Town is building a good repetition. Indeed, when I look at where the Spanish Town Hospital is coming from and where we are, our government, your government, is taking it within the next few years, my heart is full. What a beautiful function and equipped hospital we will have in a few years' time. I look forward to the new facility built to hospital design. I look forward to the suite of new services that will be offered here. The dream of a first-class Spanish Town Hospital is becoming a reality. I fully endorse this project to make the Spanish Town Hospital better and stronger and enabling it to continue to raise the standard of care for patients. I pray God's blessing on this project, this hospital and the people whom it will serve. I pray that God will guide and protect everyone that will be involved in the construction. Big things are gone and Spanish Town is not to be left behind. This development has been sorely needed I am, and I am proud that it is my government, your government, that is making it happen now. Thanks to the Prime Minister and thanks to the Minister for bringing this plan for the benefit of the people that we serve. In moments like these, I reflect on a scripture, the word of Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declare the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to arm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Let us continue to build Jamaica with God in our mind. Thank you, and may God continue to bless you. These are words from our Member of Parliament, Minister Olivia Grinch. Thank you. Thank you, MP Daly and Councillor Turner. Indeed, we are proud that we are getting such a positive light being shone on us. The reason why we can be proud, even before this building is renovated, is because we have first-class staff working here. And I want to congratulate every single member of the staff and the management of the Spanish Town Hospital because we give yeoman service every day, and you're correct, to every single person who enters here from people as far as Westmoreland. They will come here. People who have come from Kingston, when they see the service we have to offer, they said, my, my, I never know that such a place exists in Spanish Town. We are proud. All good doctors could not go back to Kingston. Some needed to stay here. And here we are. And here we will continue to remain to give our service. <laughs> Ceremonies like these are an opportune time to showcase the diversity of talent that exists in our country. And we are pleased to be joined by students of the Dintil Technical High School in Linstead St. Catherine. Ladies and gentlemen, please make them feel welcome as they come to perform for us. Thank you. 
Spanish town now left here. At this time, it is my pleasure to welcome one of our partners in the program, Mr. Lorenzo Escondor, Chief of Operations at the Inter-American Development Bank, to bring remarks. Welcome. After that performance, it's going to be very hard for me, and it's going to sound very boring. The most honorable Andrew Holness, Prime Minister of Jamaica, Dr. The Honorable Christopher Tafcho, Minister of Health and Wellness, Ms. Denise DeLay, Member of the Parliament of St. Catherine Eastern, Her Excellency Marianne Van Steen, Ambassador of the European Union, His Worship the Mayor, Councillor Norma Scott, Ms. Teresa Turner, Councillor of Hampton Green Division, representing the Honorable Olivia Green. Granger, Minister of Culture, Gender, Entertainment, and Sport, Mr. Brian Dunstan, Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Health, Mr. Oret Clark, Program Manager of Health System and Strengthening Program for the Prevention, uh, Care, and Management of, of Non-Communicable Disease Program, Partner, Distinguished Guest, Media, and Friends, good morning. As you probably realize, English is not my main language, and my team get very upset when I don't stick to the script, but let me tell you that I deeply admire how Jamaicans stand in front of mics or 
cameras and they do amazing speeches. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying, I'm, I'm learning. I remember that in September 22, with Marianne, we accompanied Minister Tafton on the presentation of the design uh, of, the, of the hospital. And at that time was my first time personally in the Spanish town. And I remember I promised that time this is not going to be the first. And I returned several times. And I want to start to say that we're going to continue coming back to Spanish song until this hospital is a reality. So on the behalf of the IDB group, I would like to congratulate the government of Jamaica for this big milestone of the signing and groundbreaking of, for the expansion of the Spanish town hospital. This was a long time coming, and it was an important moment for citizens of Spanish town in Jamaica. I want to take this opportunity to congratulate the Ministry of Health team for the hard work to make this a reality. At the IDB, we see development as a holistic exercise. Everything is connected. A growing economy needs healthy people who have access to modern health services that can help them to be well and productive members of the society. The government of Jamaica shared this perspective with us, which has led to a thriving partnership for the biggest investment of the last 20 years in the, in the health sector. This is another of those key moments of our partnership that will make a difference every day in the life of Jamaicans. Through the support of the health system strengthening for the prevention, care, and management of non-communicable diseases program, we have worked with the government of Jamaica to provide more efficient and higher quality care. The project and its impacts are important for several reasons. First, Creating universal access to health care is critical to supporting the well-being of Jamaicans. Second, in the Latin America and the Caribbean, non-communicable diseases, NCDs, have become the leading cause of premature death and disability. In the region, NCDs account for nearly 77% of mortality. We need modern health systems that can respond to this challenge. Appropriate preventive and curative care of NCDs in primary care facilities and hospital can reduce health costs, reduce mortality rates for these conditions, and improve the quality and longevity of life for Jamaicans. Third, modernization of health infrastructure and digital transformation help to evolve healthcare system to the more inclusive and efficient. It also facilitates better care for our people. Health status is associated with economic growth and productivity. To put it simple, Healthy persons are usually able to have better economic and social lives. This is why this upgrade of the Spanish Town Hospital is so critical. The renovation of the hospital will provide accessible and high quality hospital services to the population of St. Catherine and will address some of the issues that exist currently. The facility, which is 70 years old, and with this incoming transformation, we have the bandwidth to respond to the rising demand for health services in these and surrounding areas. The hospital infrastructure upgrades will expand ambulatory and inpatient general medical services and establish new surgical service to overcome existing shortage. This includes a 50-bed clinic ward, medical surgery, obstetric pediatric services, outpatient ambulatory unit, surgical unit, clinical support unit, and the central sterile services department. We can say confidential, confidently that this upgrade will enhance the health infrastructure, resolve many of the, common, the current shortcomings in the health system, and boost the government overall strategy to advance healthcare in Jamaica. We are supportive of this strategy and the initiative that are planned for the future, as well as those which have started, such as the use of the electronic medical record this is also the implementation of the chronic care model with a focus on change management planning, training of health personnel, and updating care management processes. Through investment of $50 million from the IDB, plus $11 million from, from a, uh, of a grant financed by the European Union, plus $40 million uh, from the government of Jamaican resources, the IDB has been resolute in our support of transforming healthcare and creating systems that will benefit Jamaican's people. And from the, other, the IDB side, it's not only the loan. In the past two years, we already spent 
quarter million US dollars to support in the implementation of the project. And that is free money, people. Our vision for Jamaica and the region to have strong health system, universal health coverage, and ensure sustainable health services. And we have been pleased to work with partners to work toward that vision. We thank the government for inviting us to work together to improve access to quality hair care for all and to build the resilience of this great country. Again, thank you for inviting the IDB to participate in the groundbreaking and signing ceremony for the expansion and renovation of the Spanish Town Hospital. The Inter-American Development Bank looks forward to continue partnership in the transformation of healthcare here in Jamaica. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Escondor. At this time, the port Portfolio Minister, Dr. the Honorable Christopher Tufton, MP, Minister of Health and Wellness, will make his remarks. Please make him welcome. Thank you very much, Madam Chairperson, Dr. Patricia Powell, Master of Ceremonies. And for those who don't know, she is consultant pediatrician here at Spanish Town Hospital. Her voice, her voice projects, doesn't it? You could hear her without the mic, right? Exactly. <laughs> but we appreciate your efforts. The Honorable, Most Honorable Andrew Holness, our Prime Minister and Chairman of the Cabinet and the Director of all programs that is advancing the development of this country. I want to welcome you, sir. Uh, to Familia Turf. This is your home. By the way, how many of you knew that the Prime Minister was born here? Just that little amount, eh? I guess he will expand a little bit on it when he comes up, but we want to welcome you, sir, to your home. Uh, Ms. Denise Daly, Member of Parliament, St. Catherine Eastern, thank you very much for being here. You are the Member of Parliament where this hospital is. Uh, His Worship the Mayor, Councillor Norman Scott, um, welcome, sir. And uh, you are no stranger to these parts. The Honorable Iselin Golding, Costas Retolorium for the Parish of St. Catherine. Costas, welcome to you, as usual, always present, always available. Ms. Teresa Turner, Counsel for the Hampton Green Division, representing uh, Member of Parliament, Babsy Grange. Welcome to you in your own right, and also on behalf of uh, Ms. Grange. Other members of Parliament, uh, Councils who are here, I see... Uh, Member of Parliament Miller, uh, coming from across the waters. Um, we, sorry, you were born here too. He was saying to me that he was born here too. So let's recognize him also for that. That means he has a strong interest in ensuring that the institution develops and grows. I don't see any other members of Parliament, but just recognize you if you're here. But certainly, members of the municipal authority, too many to mention. I want to welcome you here. To my team at the Ministry of Health and Wellness at Corporate, I see my permanent secretary, Mr. Dungston Brand. Welcome to you, sir. Uh, I know you're not a stranger here either because you have helped to lead this charge to get us to this point. To our chief uh, medical officer, Dr. Jacqueline Bissesa McKenzie, who actually worked at Spanish Town Hospital back in the days. I wouldn't say when she was younger because she's still young, right? You agree with me, but she is very familiar with these, these, this area. Um, I see other members of the health team, the regional, health, the, the regional directors, regional technical directors, parish manager, and I could go on, but all the members of the health team. I want to recognize Mr. Errol Green, Dr. Sandra Chambers, Mr. Abdon Campbell, again, members of the health team, Dr. Mrs. Jacqueline Ellis, chief executive officer of the hospital, uh, Dr. Stuart Morris, Senior Medical Officer, Mr. Oret Clark, who is the Program Manager for the Health System Strengthening, Mr. Oret and his team, who have done all the critical legwork to get us to this point. Uh, let me also recognize, very importantly, Mr. Lorenzo Escandior, Chief of Operations, who spoke earlier for the IDB, a very critical partner in getting us to this point. I want to say thank you very much to you and your team. And uh, our EU amb- ambassador, Ambassador Van Steen, who is also a critical partner, I want to recognize you for, 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 for this, this, this um, occasion being possible. The Chairman of the Regional Health Authority, Mr. Wentworth Charles, 
I'm going down the list. It's kind of my role to try and recognize as many people as possible. So forgive me uh, for the time it will take, but it's important. To the manager for business development and the representative of the construction company to do the work here, Mr. Ding Bio. I think I have the pronunciation, I hope I do. I want to welcome you, sir, and we look forward to a very productive, uh, result-oriented relationship over the next year or two. Um, other directors of the Ministry of Health, members of the team, well-wishers, welcome to you all. Today is a good day in public health here in Jamaica, full stop. You know, they said there's a time and a place for everything. Today is a time and a place to rejoice and to celebrate because there's enough time to lament and to be critical. But I want everyone to feel welcome because it is worth it and indeed we deserve it. I have had reason on a number of occasions as Minister of Health to, since assuming the portfolio, to recognize the resilience, the robustness, and the strength of public health despite the challenges that we face. COVID-19 and the response to that as a country and as a team being one such. Uh, today's contract signing and groundbreaking, the result of many, many days and hours of careful planning and prioritizing is another of those occasions that we can especially feel proud, and I dare say proud of ourselves as a people, as Jamaicans, and in this case, as persons living in this parish and this part of the country. The, this, is, this is giving the tremendous value, this project to this, of the Spanish Town Hospital to the public health system, and in particular what it means to access care for the people of St. Catherine and its environs. And yes, it is the fastest growing parish in the country, um, as well as those who live in and around the parish of St. Catherine. Clarendon being a main one, Kingston, as was said earlier, but St. Anne, St. Mary, I even heard as far as Westmoreland, uh, people come here because they need the service and there's excellent service that is offered here. Spanish Town Hospital, ladies and gentlemen, has a reputation of punching well above its weight. And I want to recognize the team here for that, because it's really about the people. Uh, the team have proven themselves in terms of their efforts and in terms of delivering high-quality care for patients in sometimes less than optimal conditions, but they nevertheless make the sacrifice and they do the work. It's a type, it's the largest type B facility uh, statistics are comparable to Kingston Public Hospital, the island's major referral hospital, which is a type A facility. Serves residents of multiple parishes, as said earlier. 430 beds, coming from 277 in 1952 when it began operations. Of note, just to demonstrate how significant this institution is, it is the second highest number of newborn deliveries in Jamaica, this location. Uh, with service in this era enhanced by a neonatal intensive care unit set up in August 2019 with the EU support. The unit has the capacity to facilitate some 40 babies and sees an average of some 1,200 uh, deliveries per year. And we have to commend them for that. And these are healthy deliveries uh, for the most part. The hospital also has a maternity unit that houses an operating theater, labor ward, postnatal ward, and an antenatal ward. And as said, ladies and gentlemen, this hospital punches above its weight. And we are committed, as the Ministry of Health and Wellness, and as a government led by the Honorable Andrew Holness, to ensure that we give the people who work here and the people who depend on the services here the facilities, the condition, the environment that they deserve. And this is what this government is committed to and the team that I lead are committed to. The government of Jamaica, it is impatient of debate that this time is now and that this project is transformational in so many ways. The government of Jamaica is determined to transform the health system for patients and their families, critical for health staff to motivate them and to get their best output 
given the facilities that will be enhanced, and of course for those who will use the facility. This health system strengthening program was designed to do just that. And I want to just say that I, I, I recognize the representative of the IIDB who spoke to 50 million US dollars, the 10 plus almost 11 million from the EU, excellent partnership. But the government of Jamaica under this program is putting your dollars to work to the tune of some 87 million US dollars. And I know the Prime Minister will elaborate on the transition from growing to transformation of the economy. This is the transformation phase. So it's not just about our external partners as much as how we value them tremendously. The taxpayers of Jamaica and the capacity of the economy has been placed in a position where we are committing 87 million US dollars to this project. Not this particular location because there are several components of this health system um, arrangement. I want to pause to recognize, uh, as it is my duty, and then I will sit, given that the, Prime the Honorable Prime Minister is here, recognize the team. Because this is not a one-man vision, mission, or operation. And, uh, you know, it, this to me is proof that we can work together for the good of everybody. Because this hospital don't discriminate. It caters to everybody. And uh, health has to be non-political and universal. And that's what we want. And that's what I want to be represented here, both tangibly in terms of the structures, in terms of the people, but also symbolically in terms of the message that we need to send to the length and breadth of Jamaica, to every single Jamaican. We are better off together on critical issues like public health. And this is the message that this government represents and wants to lead. So I want to thank the team. When I became Minister of Health, six months after I went to Washington, D.C., and met with the IDB, our Prime Minister, I was told by someone in the U.S., an academic, I was participating in a forum, that I'm probably the longest serving health minister in the world when I told him I was close to eight years. Thanks to you, by the way. <laughs> I cannot say it has been an all smooth journey. Lots of ups and downs. But it has given me a vantage point to see the transformation and to see the plans and the challenges and how they have unfolded. And six months after being health minister, we started on this journey. Today we are breaking ground. It's been a long road, long road, but we are here. And the team of health and wellness, well, starting with the Honorable Prime Minister and his team, because I could not do it without his guidance and counsel and the support of the cabinet of Jamaica. And I want us to just recognize. And it's not because he's from we're going to do the same thing in and Portmore and other places. So stay tuned. More is to come. But I want to thank the Prime Minister and the Cabinet. I want to thank the health team, the Permanent Secretary, Dunstan Bryan, who wasn't there when we started, but he picked up fast and he has really led a critical approach in terms of the negotiation, the discussion. So I want to recognize him for that. The clinical team led by the Chief Medical Officer, who clearly has to see every place that is designed and how it will fit into the, the health mission. And the team here at Spanish Town on the ground, the external teams of architects and engineers led by the project team, Oret and his team, uh, I want to recognize them. And I have to also recognize the Ministry of Finance, Minister Clark and his team, because once it comes to money, we have to sit down with the Ministry of Finance. And we have worked well together with the backing of the cabinet. So it has been a, a, a real group effort, and we are where we are today. So I take this opportunity with a lot of pride on behalf of all of you to say that this is really, Mayor Scott, truly the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it, full stop. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Minister Tufton. It is indeed a good day. It has been a long road. And we but we have the resilience to do so. We want to take you now on a journey to visualize what the new Spanish Town Hospital will look like when we are back here for the opening ceremony. Please give your attention to the screen as we view this video presentation on the new Spanish Town Hospital. No, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, pinch yourselves. Because when I looked at that video presentation, it looked like a foreign building, not true? Yes, it, you even see the skywalk. The only thing I don't see is the sky train, right? And if we, if we remain long enough, I think we can imagine the train going across. It was so realistic that they even had the yellow leaves that may occur when the flowers are inside too long, right? So I want to thank our architects for really trying to bring this presentation to life. Please give a round of applause for the proposed 
redevelop, reborn Spanish Town Hospital. You know, whenever there are medical presentations and the foreigners are presenting, they normally put up a picture of the hospital which they represent. Well, last year, I was doing a presentation for the Pediatric Association of Jamaica, and I was presenting cases of dengue that I had managed here. And I took the liberty of putting up that pretty picture as my first slide. And I said to the people, you know, I wish I could say that this is the reality of the place in which I work, where we have these um, aesthetically pleasing buildings. And then I went and I showed the Spanish stone of today. But don't mind, the work is good here, without or with the building. And with the building, I think it will get better. Round of applause again, please. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, our main address for this ceremony will be delivered by the most honorable Andrew Holness, O.N., PC, MP, Prime Minister of Jamaica. Please make him welcome. Good morning, everyone. We're still in the part of the month which we could consider new. I suspect that after tomorrow we will dispense with any New Year wishes. But I would take the opportunity to wish for everyone here health. I'm not a, afraid of wealth. Peace. Productivity and prosperity. How does that sound for 2024? Indeed, the theme and focus of my government, which serves you, the main lines of effort will be to focus on increasing our productivity and increasing peace in our country. If we focus on those two things, productivity and peace, then prosperity becomes an even greater reality. In fact, if we focus on this line of effort, we will create what we call a virtuous cycle. More productivity creates more peace. Productivity and peace creates more prosperity. More prosperity creates more productivity and more peace. The two things again create more prosperity. And more prosperity creates more peace and more productivity. Let us all bend our minds to this focus. Productivity and peace will create prosperity, a self-reinforcing fulfillment of the vision that we all want for our beautiful island. Having said that, Minister Tufton nudged me in his uncontrollable elation. He said, I am so proud today. I am so proud of you, Prime Minister. I'm proud of my team at the Ministry of Health. I'm proud of my government. We are able to build this hospital. It is rare that I have seen Minister Tufton express that kind of emotion. So it, it means that it means something to him as minister. It is a signal achievement of his eight years of ministry. Now, I, I don't know what signal he was sending to me if he was uh, looking for another assignment. But I, I think you should um, stay on to complete the assignment that 
has been given. The mayor intended that I focus on him with his distracting tie. But I hear, I'm here to say to all Jamaica, do not be distracted by bright colors. <laughs> all that shocks and glitters is not gold. Of course, my parishioner and fellow alumni of St. Catherine High School, Member of Parliament, Merlin Daly, and uh, you know, we we went to the same school. We were born here in Spanish Town. Merlin, were you were you born at the hospital? Sorry, Denise, were you born at the hospital? Like myself, I was. I was. I came into the world in this hospital right here. So it, it does have some sentimental value. Great sentimental value for me that we are, we are able to, to do this. I want to thank the European Union, represented here today by Her Excellency Ambassador Miriam Van Steen and the team that is with you. The European Union has been a long-standing, faithful, and generous partner to Jamaica. And I want to use this opportunity to acknowledge and to express gratitude to the European Union for their significant contribution of 10 million euros to this cause. The people of Jamaica are appreciated. We have been working with the IDB through very difficult times. Uh, I was a part of the 2009 government, 2007 to 2011. And uh, when we were forsaken, by you know friends, and we were looked upon uh, in some instances as you know a, 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 ca a case that is on the brink. Uh, the IDB stuck with us, and indeed uh, was a significant lender and development partner to Jamaica, and we have we have never forgotten that, and we we continue with that very strong relationship with the IDB, and we are happy to be partnering with you on this project. Our development partners, our development banking partners, they not only lend, but we strategically partner with them because they make available to us significant technical resources. You know, sometimes I listen to the public conversation, but not sometimes, I always listen to the public conversation because it helps me to address gaps in the public understanding. Uh, there, there is a view that to build a hospital, it is the equivalent of building any other building. The science of building a hospital over the last 50 years has increased by volumes. It is a whole study in itself, the kind of engineering and construction that is required. Jamaica has not built a hospital in the last 30 years or more. We don't have those skills resident here. And what is required to build the hospital, it is a learning curve that Jamaica is on. So I do take note of the comments made earlier regarding Cornwall Regional Hospital. Cornwall Regional Hospital is over 50 years old. It was a gift by the government of Canada. 
There was no major refurbishment to that hospital since its construction. No building built 50 years ago can stand up and provide the same level of facility and service as it did at the time of its construction, especially a hospital without constant routine maintenance. I am actually surprised that we were able to take on that project because the professionals will tell you it would be easier to just knock down the building and start again than to go and retrofit it. So it is a great bravery on our part to expend the resources. This is not to excuse the dislocation that is caused by this, but it is a necessary dislocation. That hospital is literally brand new. I've toured it three times. I've walked it from the first floor to the top and I've seen the work that is being done and I've seen the deterioration that is there that requires the level of work that is being done. So I want the Jamaican public, when we are speaking, to fill the gap that to build a hospital is no simple exercise. It's not a simple undertaking. We don't have the skills here and therefore we are, doing, we are, we are now climbing a steep learning curve building those skills which we will now have to take on more hospital construction projects, and we are now doing that with our development partner in the IDB, with the WHO, and all the other health agencies that are helping us to develop that human capital capacity to be able to build the hospitals. So I totally reject any argument that would be made politically to diminish the value of what this government has undertaken and done. As I thought about what I would say to you today, and the memories come back to this ground because I went to a primary school just down the road, Spanish Town Primary. My best friend, his mother was the matron at the hospital at the time. And uh, instead of going straight home, I would come on the grounds with him and we would be playing until it was very late, very dark, and then I had to find my way home to Hampton Green. Uh, those days, it would be very safe to walk from here to Hampton Green without, without worry. But I know these grounds very well. I, I've played on them, I've been around here. Uh, I know the history of this place, where we, where we are now, was formerly a sugar plantation. The colonial government built the hospital here and opened it in 1952. The hospital is now, what, 72 years old almost? Sir Alexander Bustamante was the head of the government at the time. It was a colonial government. The budget to build the hospital at the time was 180,000 pounds. 123,000 pounds were provided from the colonial government. The government of Britain gave that as a, a grant to build the hospital. The government of Jamaica, meaning the local taxes of Jamaica, provided the rest. It was part of a larger plan for the development of the island by the colonial powers, which included the building of the Anato Bay Hospital, the building of what they call the University College Hospital, the building of Falmouth Hospital, and so forth. Since then, we have built a few more hospitals. I digress into that kind of history and context to say to you that 
the vision for health care, which was laid out by the colonial powers, laid out by our founding fathers as an independent nation. Somehow, that vision got stalled. It got stalled. And so while there is a great cry and, you know, reflecting on it, it's the, the people of the country are rightly frustrated about the quality of the health care that they have, the long waits, the poor facilities. You know, almost 70 percent of our health care facilities in terms of equipment and structure would be below the standard required. And so while we're complaining, which we must, because that keeps the government on its toes to realize the urgency of the situation, the populace must also bear in mind and contemplate what decisions did we make about the governments that we have elected that did not administer the affairs of the country in a proper way that there would be the resources available as they are today for a government to stand up and say we are not only looking for a grant which we are grateful from the European Union of 10 million pounds we are not only going to borrow $50 million from the IDB, but your government, your taxes, which have been properly utilized, properly, you know, when we talk about fiscal responsibility, the average person takes it for granted. But this government, has managed your fiscal affairs, your revenues, the taxes that you pay, whether it is GCT, property tax, whatever tax, we have managed it in such a way that today, from our budget, we can say we will allocate 87 million US dollars from our budget. So yes, we do get some grants. Yes, we have to borrow. Still our responsibility, we're going to pay it back. But the greater part of this investment comes from the productivity of the Jamaican people. In the same way we are building the Montego Bay Bypass, all of that comes from the budget, the revenues of the people. Managing the economy properly is rocket science, but it is not a secret. When I look back historically, it is clear that we deviated from the right path of managing the economy, which would increase the productivity of the people, and then that productivity is used to further invest in the human capital development, which creates greater productivity, which creates greater human capital development. We deviated. Yes, there were shocks. Yes, things happened beyond our control. But we did not build the economy that was resilient to recover. When I talk about the economy, there are those who would want to diminish the value of it. When has Jamaica experienced a shock, meaning oil price shocks in the 70s, commodity price shocks that resulted from that, hurricane shocks like Gilbert, financial shocks like FinSAC, or the 2009 financial collapse and recovered immediately. When? It has taken us decades to recover from those shocks. But because we have built the economy 
on strong footing, putting in the necessary fiscal buffers, making sure that we manage expenditure, we have been able to reduce our debt, reduce our debt servicing, so that we have more money to spend on the things that matter to you. Today is a perfect example of what a good economy delivers for its citizens. I have to drive this point home all the time because as Jamaicans, we tend to get distracted by bright promises and bright colors. We tend not to make the connection We tend not to make the connection between our economy and our welfare. We tend to not make the economy between what we produce and our well-being. Somehow we believe that there is some secret wealth stash somewhere where governments can just reach into and spend with no connection to what we produce. Indeed, that philosophy drove governments in the past and electorates supported it. And what the result was? The result is that your governments would have borrowed not what you produce or spend, what they borrowed in the view that in the future we'll pay for it. Pay for it with what? You can only pay for it with what you produce. So I'm using this as an opportunity for every Jamaican to make the connection that if you want more hospitals, you want better roads, we have to produce more our personal productivity has to improve. And when that is paired with good government that manages that within an economy, it generates the revenues. Now, there is a reason why our political economy is the way it is, meaning there is a reason why people make the choices they make about the governments they elect. Because there is always a desperation for governments that care. For, for good reason. When my mother calls me, because she gets a lot of calls because she still lives in the area, people call complaining about the care they receive. There is no question, Madam uh, Master of Ceremony, consulting pediatrician that we have high quality health care here no question in my mind but we must also admit that the lack of resources have a significant impact on how people feel that they are cared for I don't want the people to believe that I don't understand it my mother tell me the story of what she went through when I was being born. And from her perspective, it, it is a matter of care. Even if there are no resources, it's, it's just the extra mile that you go to show your, your, you care. But that even has its limit after you deal with your first 20 or 30 patients. Humanly, it's not possible sometimes. So we get it. We understand it. The waiting time, the rough treatment that you get, and we want to change it, and we are working to change it, but we can't wish it. We have to vision it, and then plan it, and then execute it. It's one thing you can get from this government is that we are very practical. I'm not going to come here and 
tell you in glowing rhetoric. Pie in the sky vision. I'm going to tell you what is practical, what is realistic, and what we're going to achieve. We told you we were going to do this. During the pandemic, Minister Tufton and his team and myself, we had a massive presentation of this. We showed all the hospitals we plan to build. And it was reported like, yeah, here goes another promise. What we deliver and what we say we're going to do. We don't, we don't come with the, the fancy talk. We understand that our economy, as much as it is now developing the institutional legs to stand on and be resilient, the economy must be a caring economy. And as I look at the persons gathered in the hallway of the whole hospital building, some of them looking at the ceremony, some of them waiting for, for service, I want to say to you, that we are building a caring economy. Our economy will care for the people of Jamaica. So whatever increase in output that you give us, we are going to take that and we're going to spend it on health care. We're going to take that and we're going to spend it on schools. We're going to take that and we're going to spend it on public transportation. We're going to take that and we're going to spend it on garbage collection. We're going to take that and we're going to spend it on our elderly care. That is what we mean when we say we have a caring economy. I want every Jamaican listening to this now to understand the connection between productivity and the caring economy. Everyone's productivity must increase. And one of the best ways the experts will tell you to increase the productivity of a nation is to increase the health care of a nation. If you reduce the number of sick days that people have at work, immediately you see an increase in your GDP. If you reduce the level of obesity in the society, immediately you see an increase in productivity. If you reduce all the other NCDs, which Minister Tufton talks about, we need a new citizenship and a new mindset of our citizens. There is no external force that is coming to help Jamaica. There is no hidden fund somewhere. Everything that we do is what we produce. Everything we are able to do is what we produce. Our future depends on what we produce. There is no colonial government that is going to spend on us. And until we recognize that, we can't really call ourselves an independent country. My task as your Prime Minister has been to secure, first of all, our economic independence. Political independence is important, but until you can pay your own bill. That is what we want, our economic independence. And as we move towards becoming a republic, it is not about a change in the constitutional arrangement. That is perfunctory. What is important is a change in the hearts and minds of Jamaicans, that we are our agents. We have agency. We are responsible for our country, that we can build our own hospital, build our own roads, build our own ports, build our own schools from our own resources. Until we have that agency, then we can't really say we are independent. That is what we are about. 
That is what this government is about. That is our mission. And we have crafted that mission now into two lines of effort. The productivity of the people into a virtuous cycle. But then there's the other issue of peace. Many of the persons who will be served by this hospital will end up here because of violence. They will end up here because they have been stabbed, shot, otherwise maimed. They will end up here because of some carelessness, like doing stunts on the road, on a bike, without a helmet, without light, and cost the taxpayers of the country. They will end up here because of conflict at home. It is the sad reality, but it is something that I have to speak about. It is also the sad reality that it is quite likely that some of the people who will end up here for treatment will end up here because of gang warfare. Likely gang warfare over the work that will happen here. Because I am born in Spanish Town. I know what happens in Spanish Town. Well, let me tell all the gang members who are licking their lips, looking on at big fat contracts to come. None of that will happen here. I want to say it loud and clear. We have already started to work with the JDF and the JCF. This will be a military camp if it has to be. There will be no extortion here. No illegal activity here. No controlling of sight here. None of this government funding spending here will go to fund criminals. That link must be cut. Taxpayers' money can't come here. And people have name on list who don't come to work, collect pay, and then use it to buy God. Cannot happen. <laughs> Cannot happen. This mustn't help build gangs. So those who have that in their mind, stay far from here. We have learned our lessons. We have seen where many government projects and other private projects, the criminals have sought to take it over. Don't put your eye on this one. The anti-gang legislation, we are perfecting it. And we intend to use it. So if you get work on this project, you better turn up and work. I want to be clear about that. If it means that I have to put JDF and JCF around here, and any man coming in or coming out has to be checked. And the roster has to be kept outside by the JDF and the JCF about attendance for work, then it will be done. It is sad that I have to speak this way at such an important launch. But until we put these things in the open and treat with them as it should be treated, it will always be continuing. Our generation must break the cycle. We must break the cycle. Now, I was, as I said, you know, this is my town. I know it well. I love it. I heard the one commentator, you know, making the point that we're going to build this lovely facility, but the town itself is in a deplorable state. Again, the, our history, our history. Spanish Town was a glorious place. When you look at, you know, Monimar Square, when you look at Emancipation Square, you, you can see that there is history there. But again, we deviated. We didn't have the resources, a breakdown in governance. We have to put a halt to it. And that is a mission that I have. You will notice that I have spoken a lot about building a new township for Morant Bay. 
which is on its way. You will see the new road leading into Morant Bay. And there's more to come for Morant Bay. We're going to put a museum there, the Paul Bogle Museum. We're going to do a bypass road around the town. We're going to really create that as old Morant Bay, restore all the buildings there, and really fix it up as a monument to where you could say modern Jamaica started because it is as a result of that rebellion that the, that the administrative arrangements for Jamaica changed as a colony. And we're going to, yes, you would have seen we started in Bernard Lodge in building a new city there, essentially. I'm not going to go into the Portmore argument because, you know, I, I, again, I, it is unfortunate that an attempt to ensure that as our society develops and evolves and different geographical areas show a trajectory in their own economy, in their own culture and social idiosyncrasies, that you seek to ensure that the administrative arrangements for their public affairs closely matches that trajectory. That's what it is. There's, there's nothing political about it. When you think of Portmore, the reason why Portmore became a municipality is that the then mayor realized that. And the then political party also realized that and said, yes, Portmore is evolving on its own. And it's not just Portmore that is evolving. Negril is also evolving, more so because it straddles two parishes. And so it needs its own administrative arrangement. So we can't be wedded to this fact that it's 14 parishes and it's God sent it down in the Ten Commandments and it can't change. We must have agency. If we're going to talk about our independence, then it means that we must think of ourselves as being powerful enough, knowledgeable enough. We must trust ourselves enough that we can make these administrative changes that will improve ourselves. Not some stupid argument about it's going to cause people to lose election. Come on. So, Spanish Town is on the books for development attention. We have had several plans put forward. Sparcom, some of you may, may have heard about Sparcom as a, as a development plan. But we are looking at Spanish Town in a much broader way to restore its historical buildings, particularly its Georgian buildings, to improve that bridge that is there, to preserve the historical bridge, to do a thorough upgrade, an upgrade was done in the 80s of the road coming in, Burke Road and so forth, but all of that has to be developed. We have to improve the market district. Sewage has to be put in and the water mains have to be changed. It's a massive undertaking. So it, drainage as well. So in my, my budget presentation, I will have something to say about what we intend to do in Spanish though. So you have been an excellent audience and you have listened to me uh, give a quite extensive presentation. But these ceremonies are important. As I read the archival report of the opening of this hospital 72 years ago. And it recorded what the then Governor General, I believe it's you Foot, Governor, Governor you Foot said, what Buster Manti said, he was then the, the, the Chief Minister, uh, and what others have said, we have to properly document our history. And so I'm sure that my comments here will probably be read 70 years from now as motivation for this nation to do even better. God bless you, and thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Our Prime Minister, the Most Honorable Andrew Holness, ON, PC, MP, Prime Minister of Jamaica. Mr. Prime Minister, I'm happy that I had decided to wear your colors. Because if I was in bright colors, I would feel as if I'm shining too much. Thank you for the history that you have imparted to us about this, our hospital, its colonial roots. I'm happy that you recognize that even though I say that excellent um, service resides here, that boy, the lack of resources is, is a major hamper. Hmm. I was hoping you would bring it up. So I did not throw the first stone, sir, because indeed, the lack of resources has put us, the staff, in danger. So we welcome this new building because when people cannot get the service which they demand and which they deserve, the staff suffers. Staff, we are in for a treat. We will be moving into the big act, but before we do so, I think it would be remiss of me if as a pediatrician, I did not speak about birth. You can't come to Spanish Town and don't talk about birth. After all, this is the beginning of the rebirth of the Spanish Town Hospital. I've decided to equate this whole exercise to the occasion that would arise when a family is awaiting the, the birth of the first grandchild. You know when people get married and the grandparents are sitting there waiting, waiting years, years, nothing happened. Minister Tufton, eight years. All right. But before any birth can take place, there needs to be a conception. The health system strengthening program was conceptualized and is being implemented by the government of Jamaica. Now, during the conception, two things need to come together. I mean, after all, how can you have a baby without those two things coming together? So here we have the financial support from the Inter-American Development Bank and the European Union. Following conception, there needs to be implantation. And that is what will occur today. The ministers will plant their feet on the fertile Spanish town soil. And, shall I say after nine months? No, I won't be like that. This is not the, 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 con the gestation of a human being. But the new Spanish town hospital will be born after, let's see. Hmm. The project will mimic which mammal? Show of hands if you think it will mimic the gestation of a giraffe. Not at all. That is only 1.2 years. Is it the sperm whale? No, it's not. It's 1.6 years. So it will be closer to the African elephant, and that is 1.7 years. Not to put you under any pressure, but I think that is closer to the 24 months that we think that it is proposed to take before we will have the birth of the new Spanish Town Hospital. Today is the start of that new beginning, and when it is done, we will be the envy of the entire Jamaica. Dare say the Western Hemisphere because we hear it is supposed to be a spanking new building upgraded with everything. So yes, we look forward to that. But in order for us to get there, we will have to invite the Prime Minister, the Minister of Health, and wellness alongside the contractor and Mr. Oret Clark, program manager 
of the Health System Strengthening Project to the signing table. The signing will be followed by the groundbreaking exercise just on the outside of this tent and the unveiling of a billboard showcasing the new look Spanish Town. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment has arrived. It is all smiles as pen hits paper. One, two, three, there we go, signing. All of our partners are signature to this momentous occasion. Applaud them, please. Take your pictures. Important date indeed. Round of applause. Big round of applause, audience. And now they will go and do the groundbreaking just outside this tent. After groundbreaking, I'm sure I will not see you again. So ladies and gentlemen, let me use this opportunity to say that it has been my absolute pleasure chairing this program. Thank you all for your participation. Thank you for your attendance. We will now observe the groundbreaking ceremony. For those who will be traveling back onwards, safe journey. It indeed was our pleasure. Thank you again and have a good rest of day.
Yeah, one more time. One more time, brothers. Give cost a I have a lady. Can we have ladies in the middle? Come here. Yeah, them, them, them. Balance it out, yeah. yeah them do the video thing. Go on this way. Miss out? Yeah. Alright, very good. Yeah. 